clear mandate, you can go against them. Oh, these things couldn't be understood unless you know, you know, the struggle going on between Islam and Kufr. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions on one side and his Kufar on the other. But there was some intermingling because in that tribe, mainly the tribe is Kafir, but a few Muslims are there. So there is a complication. So these problems had to be solved for the Muslims. What to do? Well, that person is a Muslim, but he is along with his tribe, he is fighting us. Should I spare him? No, don't spare him. Kill him. If he has come to the fight against you, along with the, uh, with the tribe to which he belongs. So these things are to be given in detail and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything clear. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنِنَ يَقْتُلَ مُؤْمِنًا إِلَّا خَطَى And it is not becoming, not appropriate for a mu'min to kill a mu'min. Mu'min, بِاللَّذَرْ كِلْ a mu'min. إِلَّا خَطَى Except by mistake. He was aiming at something else, but you know the bullet, it went to some Muslim and mu'min, you know, and he was killed. And in the same way, you know, in accidents, you don't want to kill a person, but if some person is, you know, you know crashed under, under the wheels of your car. So all these things are, this qatl khata it is called. Murder by mistake. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنِنْ أَنْ يَقْتُلَ مُؤْمِنًا إِلَّا خَطَى A mu'min, it is not, it, beho it behoves not a mu'min that he may kill a mu'min. إِلَّا khata Except by mistake. Now what happens? If you have killed by mistake a mu'min, now there are three conditions. وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا خَطَعًا Whosoever kills a mu'min, a real true Muslim, by mistake, فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ مُؤْمِنًا Now he has to set free a mu'min slave, number one. This is the fine which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has levied on it. He had to, if he has a slave, Muslim slave, he will ha have to set him free. If he doesn't have, he will have to purchase one and set him free. Tahrir or Rakabatin Mumina, number one. Vadiyatun Musallamatun al And the blood money will have to be paid to the, to, the, to the family of the person who was killed. So two things. You have killed a person by mistake. You have to pay the blood money to the family of the person, number one. And in addition, this is actually the compensation that you are giving to the family because they have lost a member. But you know, because this is a sin, although you, were, you didn't aim at it, but it has happened at your hands. So you have to set free a mu'min from the bondage of slavery. Illa an yasaddaqu. Except if the family people, they forego that money as arm and charity. No, no, we don't require because you didn't kill willfully. You didn't want to kill our person, to murder our person. It was a mistake. We, you know, absolve you of that responsibility. We don't ac accept this, this blood money. And we give it to you back as a charity. This is one form. And if that person belongs to a tribe, which is your enemy, he is him Muslim. He was a Muslim. You have killed him by mistake. But he belonged to a tribe which is in enmity against Muslims. Now what to do? Will you pay the blood money? No. Now one thing is gone. Because the family is kafir. You are not going to pay to them the blood money. But, what is the word? What is the word? Only setting free of a Mormon slave will suffice. No payment of the blood money because he belonged to a tribe which is kafir. Now the third condition. If he belonged to a tribe between whom and you there is a treaty, he will be treated at the moment as the first case. You have to pay the blood money. To his family, because although it is kafir, but you had a misak with them. Although they are unbelievers. The tribe is unbelievers, but you had a treaty with them. So you have to pay the blood money to the family of the deceased, and also you have to set free a mu'min slave. For lam yajid, but whosoever cannot afford it, what to do? Now this is kafara. What to do? I don't have money to purchase a, a, a uh, slave and then set him free. 
prescribed by allah subhanahu wa taala you know although he didn't intend to kill him but because you know human life is so precious now what is the wisdom behind it because of this law now you will be extra careful if this law is there you will be extra careful that you don't kill a muslim or a mu'min even by mistake but if this law is not there you may be more care free to make you more careful that this is the condition this is the these are the hudud these are the tazirat tawbata min allah wa kan allah aliman hakima in allah sala knows everything he is ever knowing all wise wa man yaqtul mu'minan mutamidan now willful killing or slaying of a mu'min whosoever kills a mu'min willfully fajazahu jahannam khalidan fiha his reward his recompense is the hell in which he will abide forever this is the importance you know and how you know trivial matter today the muslims think is killing muslims killing muslims when allah says wa may yaqtul mu'minan mutaammidan fajazahu jahannam khalidan fiha khulud forever wa ghadab allah alayhi and allah will have his wrath on him he will have the wrath of allah wa la'nahu and allah will curse him wa adda lahu adaban azima and allah has prepared for him a very big punishment and chastisement now this is the importance as we read yes last night two things are fundamental for human society respect for the life human life and respect for property if you know respect for life goes the foundation of this so social order is crumbles and if respect for each other's money each other's wealth and belongings is not there it will be all chaos no contentment no peace in the society so these two things are very fundamental ya ayyuhallazina amanu idha dharabtum fi sabeeli llah fatabayyanu now another case an army is going muslim army against some tribe some enemy and in the way they find a person it belongs to some other tribe and he says assalamu alaikum what does it mean he is declared himself to be a muslim now these people 